case of one high flyer, Lloyd's chief executive, Antonio Horta Osorio, insomnia nearly cost him his job. But he's not the only executive suffering. Here to tell us more is London psychologist Dr. Michael Sinclair. Now, he's the author of Self-Loathing in the City, a guide to keep keeping sane in the square mile. Michael, thank you so much for joining us here on City Central. What is your number one tip? Just get enough sleep. Well, sleep deprivation is a serious problem that we need to address. Um, the, the, the less sleep we get, the less our, our performance is on par, really. We need to you know, make sure that we're getting enough sleep and to, to maintain our well-being, a functioning life. Um, the buildings around us are filled with high achievers who like to push the limits. How sleep deprived do you think they are? Well, we're seeing an increasing number of, of city workers presenting to our clinics with um, a whole host of stress-related conditions, particularly sleep deprivation and insomnia. I think there's a, a great paradox that's arisen in, in modern society in terms of us striving for more, more freedom with advancements in technology and trying to speed up and invent you know, faster and smarter ways of doing things. But at the same time, we're, we're caging ourselves to increasing levels of, of stress and particularly sleep deprivation. We, we feel the pressure to, to be present all the time. And of course, being present these days at work is not just about being present physically in the office. It's more on about out on the Blackberry yeah. um, and logging in at all hours of the day. This one never puts hers down, I can tell you. No, yeah. I don't. But, but I do. Well, I, try, I don't get enough sleep, but I try and get a, as much sleep as I can. And is yeah. it a problem, Michael, that people just go to, to sleep too late, or is it really the stress? Is it in, insomnia that's the main problem? I mean, how many hours should we ideally get every night of sleep? Well, the, the, you know, it's debatable, and, and really it's, it's uh, case-specific or, or for the individual, but really on average people are getting six to eight hours of sleep and feeling quite refreshed and, and so forth in the morning. Um, but really we can actually function quite well on, on, on quite a, a low level of sleep, but really I think there's a fear of not having enough sleep, and I think that's where the problem uh, arises. Insomnia itself is not actually the problem, but it's more a relationship with it, and our fear about what might happen if we don't sleep or get enough sleep, in terms of our losing our job and so forth and functioning the next day. I, I did years of early, getting up at sort of 2 o'clock in the morning, and that, that fear is is definitely present. The 24-hour society... You were getting needs, up at 2? Yeah. Or you were at work at 2 a.m.? No, I was getting up to work at 2 a.m. So you're getting up pretty early. A lot of people do jobs that are, that are night jobs or they're getting in tremendously early in the morning, yes. I, you can't get away from it. So how do you deal with, with sleep in that kind of scenario? Because you're not built to sleep during the day. Well, indeed, it's about um, establishing a pattern that works for you, whether you're a night worker or a day worker or so forth, but it's about a balanced regularity and a pattern in, in terms of lifestyle. Of course, there's other factors that, that influence this, such as alcohol, and people are, you know, maybe using alcohol more often to, to put themselves to sleep, for instance, but it's well documented and evidence that alcohol has a, a place havoc with our sleep patterns. Because, well, you, you can't get, uh, I mean, I've been sleep, we, we both have separately babies that are under six months old, and so we, I've been reading a lot of sleep patterns, and I guess alcohol means that you actually never get into that deep sleep. Absolutely, yes. I mean, there's, the evidence is out there that when we sleep, it's, a, it's, it's an unrest, we feel unrested when we wake up, um, yeah. and we can wake early, it causes early, early, early rising, early waking as well. Do you have any advice for those with small children? <laughs> well, yes. Give them up. Uh, <laughs> give them up, indeed. <laughs> Uh, Sound yes. Michael, uh, productivity, is there a correct, you know, is there a correlation between actually insomniac and productivity? Because people do feel, and sometimes you feel pressure of always being on the job, always being accessible and there, but then do you have a figure in telling us actually if you don't get enough sleep, then you lose 30% of your productivity? Well, well, I can't give you a precise figure on that, I'm afraid, but there is, it is out there that if we, you know, the less sleep we have, then our pro productivity will drop off. But I don't think it's as bad as we anticipate or, fit or fear. And I think the real problem isn't, as I said, the insomnia itself, but it's more the fear of that happening, for instance. Yeah. Mm. And then people get in the vicious cycle itself, filling in a way. We start worrying about our sleep and start, you know, worrying about our functioning the next day, and then that leaves us feeling more unrested. Okay. We're about to wrap this up. Top tips for getting to sleep. Well, I think, you know, it's all about sleep hygiene and, and, and establishing a, a comfortable and, and restful environment in your bedroom, sticking to a routine as well. Exercising earlier on in the day is most helpful, reducing caffeine, sugar, um, and, of course, alcohol. Relax. Right? And relax. That's what, relax. This is the, the primary thing. Sleep is the outcome. We can't relax. Yeah. And we can't sleep unless we relax yeah. first. Can you see? So people are too worried about sleeping. And it's, well, one minute, just calm down, yeah. relax first, and sleep will occur naturally yeah. as a consequence. That's a big problem. I mean, that's why you have these hotels, you know, popping up where you can just rent sleep cabins. Yeah. It's easier said than done, though. It is. Like, you get into a vicious, vicious cycle with the whole thing. Uh, anyway, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank Dr. You. Michael Sinclair of the City Psychology Group.